Hi, Graham here, and I wanted to make a short little video because I wanted to make something, but more relevantly because I've received a, a handful of tweets and YouTube comments asking how we do the cool little sort of wobbly shadow outline effect on our podcasts, since we are doing them audio only and working from home. And I thought that I would talk about that. It'd be easier to explain this way than just like replying to a tweet. Now, later in this video, I'm going to get very specific and technical about how to do this in Adobe After Effects, but I thought before that, I would just talk a little bit about why we're doing the podcasts the way that we are. The big question that some people have had is why not do them with webcams like we've done for stuff like Checkpoint or Askler? And that's, that's a great question because obviously we can do that. But philosophically, we're trying to make our podcasts a podcast first and then a vidcast second. So we're trying to get the best audio quality for them that we can. And as many of you may have discovered during this whole procedure, video conferencing, it not perfect system. And people frequently talk over one another and it's just not... A great listening experience and so tailoring it for that purpose is a lot easier with audio I go in there and I do a bunch of editing and here's some examples of that because what you might end up with coming out of the recording is something like this bothered with yet is the uh, Yorion deck that also Yo, runs one? Um, uh, well, there's one that just like... And you can clean that up so that all the intent is there. You're not actually removing anything that anyone said that was sort of important to what's being talked about, but it just sounds way nicer like this. Bothered with yet is the uh, Yorion deck. Which one? Uh, well, there's one that just like... Here's another example. Before. Uh, right, I forgot. Was, was blue that and blue-black? Black? Yeah. Yeah, blue-black with like um, uh, Drakehaven. And after. Right, I forgot, but was that blue-black? Yeah, blue-black with, like, uh, Drakehaven. So I spend some amount of time going through all of our podcasts, tidying them up, tightening weird pauses, cutting out moments where someone's like, whoops, I just, my chair made a weird noise, and trimming up and tidying the parts where people talk over one another. Because you don't need to keep in people saying things at the same time and then going, oh, wait, I'm sorry, you, you, go, you go ahead. It's okay, it's everything's fine. When you can just have that not be there. It takes longer, but it's a better final product, so, you know. So, if you want to do what I have been doing, uh, here's how to do that. First of all, everybody has to record into their own audio track. This will not work if everything is in one audio file. Everything needs to be separate. For that, we use a service called Zencaster, which is a website where you go onto it, you basically start a voice call with everybody, and then you hit record, and it records the all the audio locally on everyone's computers, uploads it to Zencaster afterward, and whoever's in charge of editing it can download everything, and then you have a synced audio file for each participant that are exactly the same length, and when you throw them into an editing program, they'll all be exactly how you need them. If you don't want to use Zencaster, you can still do it with people recording individually locally. You'll just have to make sure that when you're putting it into the audio editing program that they're all where they need to be synchronized. By the way, I'm using Final Cut Pro to do a lot of the video aspect of this, and I I actually don't recommend it for doing podcast audio editing. The way that it slips stuff around is not good for this. I do it because I'm fast at the program and I know how to use it. I would honestly recommend Adobe Premiere if you want to do it in a video editor, um, something like Audition is probably more appropriate. The point is, don't judge me. I know that Final Cut is not good for this, but I'm I'm fast at it. So if you do find yourself in a position where you have to use Final Cut, I recommend that you put one track in the main timeline and then the others below that as storylines so that when you cut something out, you can hit the delete key and replace it with slug rather than just deleting it so everything doesn't slip around. If you've used Final Cut, you probably know what I'm talking about. For everybody else, enjoy those words. Now, once you have every individual track edited in the length that you want it, because you've got to get all that stuff done first, then you bring them all into After Effects. And this is where 
it starts to get technical, so I'm going to go to a screen view. So here's the most recent episode of Tap Tap Concede, and here are the four different audio tracks. So the only thing in this audio track of me is me talking. There's no other audio in here. It's just me. In fact, if I mute everybody else, which I'll want to do anyway, you can hear that it's, you know, I'll just be like... Cameron, Ben Ulmer, and Ben Wheeler. So it's no one else is talking there. And what you need to do is make sure that each track is the only one that you can hear. So in this case, me, I'm the only one that's unmuted. You click on it, go to Keyframe Assistant, convert audio to keyframes. So that's gonna take a second. And what that's doing is creating keyframe data, like animation data out of the waveform. You know, the waveform of like how loud I get, it's higher and if I'm quiet, it's lower. And it's using that information to make animation data out of it. It doesn't do anything right now. We need to tell it what to do. So what we've ended up with is this audio amplitude layer that just is full of keyframes. It's just nothing but keyframes. I'm going to name that Graham. The part of this we're interested in is if you open it up into the effects into both channels, this slider, which as you can see has some animation attached to it. If you click on the slider and you click this thing here, which is the graph editor, you can see those are the keyframes that it's done and it's the very closely modeled on the waveform and be, being that it was made from the waveform. So now what you have to do is go into this object, which is grampop.png. You can see that the object is that outline shape. And we're going to make the scale, the size of it, link to that. And the way that we do that is we option click on this little stopwatch here, and it brings up the expression which right now is just transform scale. And we're gonna grab this little weird spiral that for whatever reason is called a pick whip. We're gonna click and hold on it and we're gonna go up to this slider here and we're saying link this to here. Boop. And that's it. It's now added this sort of big expression in here of the information that's telling it to do that. We need to add one more thing because right now, if I just leave that alone, here's what it looks like. Broadcasting live from the Bonders Enclave on the plain of Ikoria, this- The reason it's so small there is because it's assuming a scale of 100. It's assuming that this thing is already the size it is, which is not how it was made. This thing is a much higher res image and it's been scaled down to 26%. So we need to tell this expression Okay, but just assume that 26% is where you want to start. To do that, we go back down into this expression and we add plus your little square bracket, 26 by 26. So that's your default state that it's starting at. Hit enter. And now it'll look like this. Broadcasting live from the Bonders Enclave on the plate of Ikoria, this is Tap Tap Concede. Which is pretty good. It's almost there. The problem is, there's no sort of upper bound, and it can get very big and out of control. Let me see if I can find an example. But it'll be a fun surprise for all of us. Also, this show is brought to you by you and your kind support of our Patreon. So it's just the outline is getting too large, which is going to be a problem. So we have to sort of keep it under control. And we do it with a very specific expression that I got from some other website somewhere. Way back in here in this slider you now option click on this stopwatch. And this is the expression that's put in there by default, effect both channels one, whatever. So we're gonna, we're gonna wipe that out and we're gonna replace it with ease bracket value, comma, and then a whole bunch of numbers. So what do those numbers mean? <laughs> this is where it gets, frankly, a little beyond even me. I know what fiddling with these numbers will do and I can't rightly explain all of why, but I'll do my best. So the first two numbers here, one to 15, that's the range of the waveform that this effect is going to be looking at. If you click on the slider here and then go back to this graph editor, you'll see here, there's this number right here on the side, this little 15, it goes all the way up to 20. You see over here, I spike all the way up at 20, but basically what we're telling it is only pay attention if it's between 
1 and 15 meaning anything at the bottom if like my chair makes a tiny squeak or there's like some rustling of paper or a noise outside or something it probably won't pay attention to that and if i scream and go really really loud it also won't worry about that it's only going to really pay attention to this range and that range will be different depending on what your audio is you'll have to just take a look and see and then the other two numbers are how intensely it's going to do the effect so right now it's listening to the range of 1 to 15 and it's doing the effect from 0 to 7. So it looks like this. Broadcasting live from the Bonders Enclave on the plain of Ikoria. Th but if I change this 7 to like a 20. Broadcasting live from the Bonders Enclave on the plain of Ikoria. This. You see it gets too big and too unwieldy. So that's just sort of that I've been playing around with trial and error. You just have to sort of zone in on where you think it ought to be so you do all of that four times in this case or as many times as there are people on your podcast and then you export it out of after effects and put it back into your editor and add your titles or whatever other information you need to do and then you have the end result or like i slam my hand on the keyboard and i'll get people to be like oh fight it's like uh you know <laughs> you just get it like that <laughs> So that's probably well beyond what most of you needed or cared to know about that particular process, but had a couple questions, thought I'd answer it this way and give you a window into some of the behind the scenes of the things that we've been doing with our podcasting from home. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening. Um, if you got any questions, hit me up in the comments and I'll answer what I can. Uh, yeah. Okay, bye.